Good morning again. Uh, the next talk is uh, given by Tiziana Ban, uh, Senior Research Scientist at the Institute of Physics, Zagreb, Croatia. And she will talk about optical frequency comps in quantum technology applications. Tiziana, thank you for accepting the invitation. Looking forward to your talk. Thank you very much. So as you heard, I'm coming, I'm Tiziana Ban, coming from Institute of Physics in Zagreb, in Croatia. And uh, first, I would like to, to thank organizers for the invita invitation and for the opportunity to present activities in, in Croatia in the field of quantum technologies. Uh, so, hmm, I have a small technical problems. I don't know why now I cannot move the slides because this was, hmm, it was before very, I'm sorry, it just doesn't work now. Okay, so let me just try to share the screen again. Right. That's what I wanted because to suggest. Because I don't know what is going on. It seems something just stopped working. So I stopped sharing and I will do it again because, yeah, whenever you have. Okay. Let's try again. I'm sorry for this delay, but you know, you never know no with this yeah. technology how this will work at the end. And this does not work. Okay. Okay, now I sh I'm sharing the screen. Okay. Let me do it right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now we will do it again. Okay, now let's just winter. Okay, yes. Okay, here we are. So can you see my slides? Everything is fine? Yes, it seems. Okay, super. So here is the outline of, of my, my talk. So I will start with brief introduction of the CALT project, which is the capital infrastructure project of the Institute of Physics in Zagreb. Then I will provide a basic description of the frequency comp light, after which I will introduce three applications of the frequency comps, which we use in our lab. So let's start with CALT, which is actually a strategic research infrastructure project of the Republic of Croatia with a budget around 16 million euros, funded through European Regional Development Funds. Uh, the goal of the, of the CALT project is the reconstruction and the extension of the one wing of the Institute of Physics and its equipping with advanced laser systems and other scientific uh, equipment. So in October, we moved into the, into the new wing of the, of the CALT. And in this picture, you can see uh, the comparison of the of the of the institute before and after the renovation, as well as the interior of the new building with modern laboratory facilities. So, CALT consists of four research units with, that which are equipped with uh, different with laser systems of different characteristics. And for this talk, the most important is of course the quantum technology unit which is equipped with lasers that enable research in the field of quantum sensors and clocks, which means with continuous wave lasers and optical frequency comps. So in our group, in our tech quantum technology group at the Institute of Physics in Zagreb, uh, we focus on three main research topics, frequency comp cooling of atoms, quantum memories based on electromagnetically induced transparency, and uh, an optical atomic clock with called strontium atoms. Today, I will pres briefly present our motivation, main results, and current status in each of the research topic. Okay, so the common thread in all our research uh, are optical frequency comps that are generated by the mode locked femtosecond lasers. In time domain, they can be represented or described by ultra short pulse train made of series of laser pulses that are identical and regularly spaced in time. The phase of the pulse 
which is defined as a shift of the pulse envelope with respect to the carrier wave, is constant from pass to pass. In spectral domain, uh, the Altershold pulse train provides a broad spectrum consisting of a million of very narrow, equally spaced spectral modes. The frequency of an individual spectral mode can be described with relation, uh, where uh, uh, and uh, it is determined by two frequencies in the RF domain and number N is the number of frequency comb mode. So by measuring and controlling these two frequencies in RF domain, it is possible to control the frequencies of all modes. And of course, you all know that for uh, uh, invention of frequent or let's application of frequency comms, there was a Nobel Prize in 2005, which was shared by John Hall and Theodore Hatch. Okay, up to now, we already, it's clear that uh, frequency comms are very specific sources of light. Uh, their spectrum consists of millions of phase coherent continuous wave oscillators. Uh, their emission cover very large spectral range from vacuum ultraviolet uh, until to, to mid infrared. Their frequency are known very precisely with about uh, one hertz resolution. And due to the pulse nature, they have a high peak power for efficient nonlinear optics, optical processes. Cool. So uh, in our experiments, I will start with, with the first topic. We use frequency comb for, for cooling the atoms. Uh, in these pictures, you can see our magnet optical uh, trap with rubidium uh, cloud shining. Here is just an, an old frequency comb, and this is our new lab space. Uh, why we use frequency comps to, to cool the atoms? Because regardless of the great importance laser cooling and trapping has today, laser cooling techniques are still limited to atoms with simple energy level structure and closed transitions accessible by current continuous wave laser technology. So the extension of the laser cooling to a variety of atomic species and molecules is limited by the difficulties in creating in, in creating continuous wave lasers in vacuum ultraviolet part of the spectrum and with a complex level structure of many atoms and all molecules, which would require many repumper lasers. So in this periodic table, you have elements marked in blue, and uh, those, those are the elements which have been to date cooled using continuous wave laser cooling. As you can see, there are still a lot of work to be done. So we believe that the frequency comps could unlock the laser cooling limitations because, as we said before, they are pulsed uh, laser. They have a very high power, so uh, they can be easily converted to the vacuum ultraviolet part of the spectrum. And in the same time, they preserve the long coherence times needed for efficient laser cooling. So therefore, frequency comps could enable laser cooling of atoms with strong cycl cycling transition in vacuum ultraviolet, such as, for example, hydrogen, deuterium, or anti-hydrogen. Then laser cooling of uh, more complex atomic species and uh, molecules, for which it is needed to have a large number of repumper lasers. Then uh, they could enable simultaneous cooling of multiple species, where uh, for different species, different comb modes can be used. And uh, as, as a last, uh, the uh, frequency comps can enable miniaturization of the experiment as the novel frequency comp technologies can deliver frequency comps on the chip. Okay, however, just by looking at the frequency comp spectrum and having in mind that atoms are typically cooled in the process of absorption and spontaneous emission when excited by the laser red tuned from the atomic transition, the frequency comp cooling concept seemed not so applicable because uh, in the frequency comp spectrum, there are plenty of frequency comp modes that are blue tuned from the atomic transition and could potentially hit, additionally hit the sample. In the theoretical proposal of Kielpinski, uh, uh, published in 2006, the first indication were given that cooling with frequency comp could still be achieved in specific cases 
when the repetition rate of the femtosecond pulses that constitute the frequency comb is much larger than the line width of the atomic transition. And in this case, only the closest comb mode to the atomic transition is relevant, and the other comb modes induce negligible scattering. So it, it was uh, needed 10 years that the cooling by frequency comb has been really demonstrated uh, also in experiment. And this has been done in several groups in Germany and USA. And also one of the group is our group in Zagreb, where we demonstrated frequency comb cooling or frubidium atoms on a dipole allowed transition and 780 nanometer, nanometers by a single frequency comb mode. So in this picture, you can see the measured temperature as a function of the comb mode detuning. And uh, you can see that uh, for, for a given comb mode detuning, which is red tuned for the atomic resonance, which is somewhere somewhere here, it, which is exactly here, uh, the mean temperature is achieved of around, uh, the temperature is equal to the dollar temperature as is, and it is limited by, by a low intensity in the, in the comb mode, which drives the, this transition. We perform additional measurements and we verified that the single comb frequency comb cooling is completely analog analogous to the uh, continuous wave laser cooling. Okay, the next uh, challenge in our group was to demonstrate simultaneous multi-channel cooling by using different comb modes. Such cooling scheme could find applications in multi-species interferometers, but also in, in multi-species modes for experimental investigation of multi-atom interactions. Compared to continuous wave-based multi-species cooling schemes, using frequency comb for cooling greatly reduce the complexity of multi-species experimental systems because a series of continuous wave lasers could be replaced by a single frequency comp source. In addition, only two independent feedback loops are needed to stabilize and phase lock all comp lines within the frequency comp spectrum. Okay. But before conducting an experiment, we develop a theoretical model to qualitatively describe the Doppler cooling of atom using a frequency comp. So we investigate uh, the interaction of two level atoms to counter propagating uh, pulse strains. Uh, we calculate uh, the frequency comp radiative uh, force on atoms, which is shown here. And this uh, calculation showed that each comp mode uh, can effectively act as a cooling laser. Uh, this calculation indicated simultaneous laser cooling in multiple cooling channels can be achieved using a single frequency comp source. And in this table, we also uh, give a specific frequency comp uh, parameters, which uh, would enable simultaneous cooling of multi-alkali atoms, such as, for example, potassium, uh, fermions and uh, both rubidium isotopes. Uh, okay, so in order to demonstrate uh, this frequency comb multi channel cooling, we performed an experiment in which we simultaneously cool rubidium 87 and 80, 85 isotopes using, using two independent single comb lines from, the, from a single frequency comb. So our, our apparatus consists uh, of a standard double species magneto-optical trap uh, for pre-cooling of atoms. And uh, actually this step was needed since our frequency comp does not have enough power per comb mode to enable to cool the atoms directly from the room temperature. Such overlapped uh, double species cloud uh, represents the initial sample for all our measurements. As for frequency comb, we use fully stabilized frequency comb generated by frequency doubling an airborne fiber modlock laser operating at a frequency around 80 megahertz. Frequency comb cooling is achieved in one dimensional geometry in one dimension using the, ge the geometry of counter propagated frequency comb beams. So the measurement protocol starts with preparing the, uh, the two clouds in dual species mode, then 
at some time we switch uh, off the mode beams and to turn on the frequency comb uh, beams. After a given frequency comb cooling time, we switch off the, the frequency comb beams and we, we let the cloud expand freely for several milliseconds. Then we take a series of alternating time of flight images for rubidium 85 and 87 clouds separately, from which we uh, calculate the uh, or determine the cloud temperature. Okay, one important thing to, to mention here is in order to achieve simultaneous cooling of two atomic species, two modes within the comb spectrum must be read the tuned from the cooling transitions of two atomic species simultaneously. Therefore, very careful tailoring of the frequency comb spectrum uh, is therefore crucial for the successful realization of the frequency comb cooling. And in this picture, you can see the, the, uh, the situation in our experiment. So the, the comb modes are denoted with these uh, black lines, while, while the other lines represent uh, the hyperfine transition either in rubidium 87 or 85 isotopes. Uh, in our experiments, we simultaneously cool both, uh, uh, both uh, isotopes with different uh, comb modes, where the end comb modes participate uh, for cooling of rubidium 87 isotopes and N plus 14 comb mode. Uh, participate uh, in cooling uh, rubidium 8085 isotope. So here we've, I show the temperatures uh, measured uh, from uh, measured by TOF for uh, rubidium 85 and the rubidium 87 isotopes as a function of delta, where delta is the, the tuning of NCOM mode from the rubidium 87 to 3 resonance. The measure a frequency comb cooling temperature uh, approach the initial temperature as delta is increased, as you can see here. So as we as the comb mode is detuned from the atomic resonance, which is actually denoted by zero here. So uh, from the figure, it is clearly seen that the, the minimum temperature for rubidium-85 is a top approach Doppler temperature, while the temperature for rubidium-87 isotope is a little bit higher due to the higher initial temperature. The dashed line here shows the atom temperature, which was calculated using the relation here, which was actually derived from our in our theoretical paper. It is a stationary state temperature in the case of the interaction of two level atoms with two counterpropagating frequency comb beams. Uh, then in this figure here, uh, I show the temperature obtained by TOF uh, for after simultaneous frequency comb cooling of both isotopes as a function of the frequency comb cooling time. Uh, as the frequency comb cooling time is increased, the cloud temperature is decreased from the initial temperature prepared in the mod and reach stationary state temperature, which is limited by a Doppler temperature as a result of, uh, of a low power per comb mode. The steady state is achieved faster for higher frequency mode intensity and lower initial atomic temperatures. With this, I finish the, the first part and I'm uh, going to the second topic of my presentation. Uh, it is about uh, our research in the field of quantum memories based on electromagnetically induced transparency. So the research in uh, this research has been started recently and uh, actually includes the development of new types of quantum memories based on rubidium atoms. Quantum memories plays a play a crucial role in quantum repeaters that enable quantum communication over long distances. They allow the temporary storage of a photon quantum state through its mapping into a collective atomic state. Different atomic media and protocols result in different memory properties, such as efficiency, storage time, spectral width, etc. And it was uh, and this was the challenge for for us uh, to investigate the optimum quantum memory. Uh, so in our research, uh, we use uh, electromagnetically induced protocol to to store a series of uh, of pulses 
in a thermal gas of rubidium-85 atoms. We use a classical lambda scheme in which two hyperfine ground hyperfine levels and one excited hyperfine level are coupled by weak probe laser and strong control or pump uh, laser. Both beams are actually derived from the same uh, laser, which is stabilized to the to the rubidium spectroscopy. The frequency difference around three gigahertz, which is actually the energy level uh, splitting of the hyperfine, uh, the energy difference of the two ground state hyperfine levels, uh, is obtained by using electro EOM, electro optical modulator. So these are then here. Uh, co-propagated, the beams are then uh, co-propagated through the rubidium vapor and uh, the transmission of the weak probe beam is monitored by a photodiode. In the, conditions when, in the conditions when two photon resonance is fulfilled, the transmission of the probe is increased as a result of electromagnetically induced transparency. We have measured such eight spectra for different pump powers. From uh, one, one example is here, uh, from which we deduce the dependence of electromagnetically induced uh, transparency width on pump power. Uh, the measure results for three different cells are presented uh, presented here. Uh, given the relation which is shown here, uh, it is clear that the intercept. Uh, actually is uh, related to the gamma uh, one two, where gamma one two is the ground state decoherence rate. So the smallest decoherence rate in in our experiment is obtained for the cell coated with paraffin and felt and filled with five tor of neon. It is about one point five kilohertz, and uh, uh, this cell was uh, is then used to demonstrate the a pulse storage. Okay, in order to trap, store, and release the probe pulse that is shaped as a half of Gaussian, because we found out that this is the optimal optimal pulse shape for 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 the for our quantum memory, we use an acoustic uh, modulator to 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 turn off the pump field smoothly, reducing this pump field intensity to zero effectively reduce uh, the pulse velocity to zero and maps the coherences of the coupled hyperfine levels to the uncoupled ground hyperfine levels. So because this coherence is actually now coherence in the ground state, uh, this state uh, will persist in the medium indefinitely until destroyed by atomic collisions. And this is what limits actually the quantum memory or the storage of the pulse in the quantum memory. After some uh, time interval, which we denote by uh, storage time, uh, we turned uh, on the pump field on again, and that recreates a probe light light pass. The measured uh, input and the output probe passes are shown in this figure uh, by green and uh, and the blue colors. In uh, the maximum storage time. A measured down experiment uh, is around 800 microseconds. Okay, so this is everything fine, but there are still quantum memories with uh, continuous wave light. So the further activities in this area includes uh, the development of multi-mode quantum memories based on electromagnetically induced transparency and uh, based on the frequency combs, where each comb mode can effectively participate in a lambda scheme with a continuous wave laser as a pump or with another frequency comb source or another frequency comb mode. Here I show our first uh, results on the electromagnetically induced transparency of a single frequency comb mode. Uh, the Transmission of a single frequency comb mode is measured using heterodyne spectroscopy. And as you can see from this figure, in the condition of electromagnetically induced transparency, the transmission of the single comb mode increase. With this, uh, I 
time uh, com coming to, to the final or third topic of our research, and it is about strontium atomic clocks. So we, we, we all know that atomic clocks has enabled technological and scientific advances. Uh, the advent actually of optical frequency comps to decade ago enabled improvements in the accuracy and precision of atomic clocks and enabled that the optical clocks uh, surpassed the fractional and centrality of the cesium clocks, as you can see from this uh, graph here. Strontium is often used in such optical atomic clocks with current state-of-the-art clocks reaching a level of accuracy below 10 to minus uh, 11, uh, 18. So here is uh, the design of our vacuum system. Uh, the vacuum components are, are, uh, are in the process of purchasing. Uh, so our strontium clock, our strontium atoms will be uh, generated in a fusive uh, oven and they will be first uh, cooled, tr uh, transversely cooled and then slowed down by a Zeeman slower. Next, they will enter the two-dimensional magnetoptical trap chamber, and they will be then uh, cooled there and pushed to the three-dimensional scientific mod chamber. In the 3D mod chamber, a blue and red mods will be used to cool down the atoms, and once cooled, the atoms will be confined in optical tweezers or in a multiplexed 1D lattice. Regarding the, the laser systems, or capital laser systems are already installed in our lab. So we plan the stabilization of our laser systems based on the low noise 1550 fiber laser, Airbnb fiber laser or, or frequency comp, uh, which is stabilized to a high finesse optical cavity. The frequency comp spectrum will then be broadened, as you can see just one example here, uh, with nonlinear processes. And then this uh, light will be used to lock the, uh, all other lasers, like repumper lasers. So we need two repumper lasers and we need uh, red mod lasers. They will all be locked to the frequency comp light. Uh, this will make our setup highly stable and let's say simple, but what is simple with strontium is a questionable. Okay, uh, with this, I am I finish my talk. Actually, I don't know how I am doing with time. And before wrapping, I would like just to thank uh, my group at the Institute of Physics in Zagreb. As you can see, uh, we are around. 10 to 15 people, depending on the period. And just uh, currently, one postdoc and three master's students also joined the group. So, uh, Damir Aumiller is also a senior uh, researcher. He is a leader of the CALC project. And we have Nevin Shantinch. He is a young researcher just, um, just uh, employed at the Institute, and he will be running uh, a strontium uh, clock. Uh, the, the, the rest, Ivana, uh, Vjekoslav, Daniel, Elinor, Mateo, and Ivor and Domagoj, they are PhD students, and we hope that, uh, yes, our group will, uh, will enlarge because we have uh, plenty of plans and work to do. And uh, finally, I thank, thank you for your attention, and I am open for your questions. Thank you very much, Tiziana, for a nice talk. We are at 29 minutes now, so we can afford one question from Oksana Mishina. Uh, what was the trick, in simple words, missing for 10 years to be able to cool with the frequency modes? Yeah, I, I, I think actually the trick is, uh, is uh, the low of, uh, intensity per comp mode. And this is still a limitation in the frequency comp cooling. You actually, uh, in order to, you, it's it's really hard to produce. So it, you have to go to actually picosecond comps, which do not have such a broad spectrum that you could have uh, uh, increased power per comp mode, which will enable you to go down uh, below the Doppler temperature. Thank you very much. And please do check the Q and A. Uh,
um, column for another question from Oksana. We have to move on. Thank you very much, Tiziana, for the nice okay. talk. Thank you. Bye-bye. Enjoy Thank the you. rest of the evening. Bye.